What's up everyone? In this video, I'm going to show you how you can up your Power Apps user experience game by creating your very own customizable and configurable number control. So this will go above and beyond the text control, which we can put numbers in in our Power Apps Canvas apps and give us a way where we can easily increment and de-increment the number value, as well as restrict the max and the minimum value that's allowed. Plus, I put all of this inside a component that you can download and start using in your apps. I'll break down how you can build it right after this. First, I thought we could take a look at what our options are out of the box to be able to have a number field in a Power Apps Canvas app form. So here I have a very simple Power App where I can submit a new travel request. So I click the plus button and it takes me to this screen where I can fill out information about the trip, including the duration and number of days that I want to have the trip for. So probably the most commonly used control for numbers in Power Apps is the text input. So I can use this to not only enter text, but also numbers. So I could type in a five, for example, if I'm gone for five days and use that as my control. Now, if I want to enforce that they only put numbers, I can do that easily with some of the out of the box control properties. So if I were to select this text input, I can go over here in the properties pane and change the format from text to number. So that will at least restrict the number. Now, if we go to our insert and input tab, you could also potentially use this slider control for your number needs. So we can actually use a slider and it has a number value associated with it. And you can set a min and a max value for this slider that you can drag it to. So that is another option. Now, what I'm going to be showing you though, is how to create something like this. So I'm going to actually go into our get more components option here in the left hand side under our insert menu. And I'm going to say get more components. So I've actually built a specialized number control component. So if we import that, let's look how this functions. So I'm going to go to the library components and I'll add this into my screen. And this is the number control I'm talking about. So what I can do with this particular component is I can define a starting number. So maybe I want to start it at zero, a minimum amount. So maybe zero is the min and the max. Maybe I only want that to be 10, like I said. And I can even define the increment. So if I want to have some kind of number control where I increment not just by one, but maybe five, 10 or 15, I can do that. But I'm gonna change the increment to one and keep it pretty standard. So now if I play my application here, I can simply click the plus button and it will automatically increment the value that's inside here by one as I go up. And then if I click the minus, it'll de-increment it by one as I go down as you see, not allowing me to go lower than zero. As much as I keep clicking this button, I can't go any lower than zero. And conversely, if I keep clicking the plus button, I'm not gonna be able to go past 10 because that's the maximum value that I defined. So this is just a much more user-friendly and intuitive way of having some kind of number input in your Power Apps forms. Very similar to what we probably see in a lot of different desktop and mobile applications that we interact with. And fortunately, it's relatively simple to build. So in my opinion, a pretty nifty control. Let me show you how I built this. Now to show you how I built this, I'm going to open up my component library where I built that number control widget. And if you don't know what components are, I definitely encourage you to watch my video I have that explains exactly what components are and the type of components that we can build. But the long and short of it is, if you're wanting to build something that you foresee reusing in multiple different applications, you want to build it as a component. So that's why I did that with this number control. So what I love about the number control is it's extremely simple to build, but it gives you a big bang for your buck user experience wise. If we expand out the number control on the left hand side here, you see that it's actually only three items that make up this number control. We have a text input, which I have called text number, and we have two buttons. We have one for the up and one for down. And all I did is style the buttons and the number control accordingly. And I added in some power FX magic on top of it. And we have this beautiful number control. So to break it down for the text input, I kept it very simple and straightforward. So I just dragged our text input and positioned it in the middle of my component here. And most of the magic is on these buttons. So if I go and insert, say a different button here on the insert menu, you'll see this is the default styling that we get for a button. So to make it kind of look like what we're seeing here, where if you notice the right hand side, say of the minus is very straight, but the left hand side has these rounded edges. And then conversely for the right hand side, the left hand side is straight and it has the rounded edges on the right hand side. The only other things I did was changing the background color. 
So rather than this blue, I just simply made the background transparent. And the text color here in the right hand side under color property, I changed that from white to black. And of course, I changed the text that shows. So I put a plus sign in there and adjusted the font size. And the border as well, I just put in a soft gray border. So here in our border color, I typed in gray and I believe I set that border amount to one. So that gives us roughly what we're seeing here in our buttons. Now this rounding effect is done through something called a border radius. Now if we click on the button and look on the properties panel on the right hand side, we see we do have an option for border radius. But if we change that, you'll notice that it applies that to every single corner of our button. And that's not what I wanted in this case for my numeric control. I only wanted to have this circular border radius on one side of it. So to do that, we can go into our button and use this properties drop down on the left hand side. And here you'll see that for border radius, so we have all these properties broken out for each different side of the button. So I have a radius bottom left, bottom right, top left, and top right. So to get that effect, I simply went in to say this radius bottom left, and I changed that value to say 60 for the bottom left. And I want the top left to match, so I went to that property, matched it to 60. But then for the opposite side, so for the bottom right, I want that to be straight, so I'm gonna change that to zero, and same thing for top right on the opposite side to zero. And that gives us the effect that we're seeing here where one side is curved and the other side is flat. So that's really the only uh, UI magic that I did to make those format correctly. Now the rest is all the power FX logic. So let's see how I made that happen to where we can click this button and have it de-increment the number and click this button and have it add to the number. So starting with the add, all the magic is happening on the on select of the button. And if we expand out our formula bar, we will see what we have here. Now, before I dive into what's going on in this PowerFX formula, we need to understand the different properties that I built for this component. So I'm gonna click on the number control component itself, and we'll look down here on the bottom right-hand corner at our component properties. So as you can see, I have a few different component properties that I'm using. The ones that we need to be concerned about for the logic of our buttons are these four right here. First, I have the start number. That's the number that's gonna show as default inside of my control, which you saw was zero. So that's a number input property that a user can put in to configure the control. Then we have min, which is the minimum number that you want to allow a user to go to in your control. Max is the maximum number we wanna have a user to go to. And the increments is the ability to, if you say click the plus button, to not only increment by one, but maybe two, three, four, five, you name it. You'll notice at the bottom, Separate from all the rest of these properties, like our min, max, and start number, I have one defined as number output. That's a special kind of property called an output property that allows us to take a value stored inside of our control and pass it on to your screen and your power app so that you can use that value. So it's just giving us a way for the logic that we're doing inside of this component to be able to take that value and give it to the user. So I wanna compare that value. So what is the output of number of my control right now? And I wanna add the increment value that I have. So right now, if I have my start number set to zero, I wanna add my increment to that, which I have set to one. So my value is gonna be one. So I'm saying if that is greater than whatever I've defined as the maximum allowed value of my control, well, that shouldn't be allowed. We shouldn't allow any more than what the maximum value is. So I'm gonna use a global variable, and we have to use global variables inside of components. We can't use context variables in components. So I'm gonna set this global variable called var number to whatever value is in the text box, because that stores the current value. And I'm wrapping that value in the value function just to ensure that that value is being recognized as a numeric value. Now, if it is not greater than that, meaning it's within the bounds of what I've allowed, then I'm going to set the var number variable to the calculation. So to whatever is in this text box plus the increment value that I've defined. So zero plus one in this case. So hopefully that is pretty straightforward and hopefully you'll see that we're going to do this exact same logic, just tweaked slightly for the minus button. So going to the minus buttons on select, you'll see we're doing the same thing except we're saying if the number output 
minus the increment is less than the minimum that I said that it can have, then we need to keep the number the same because it can't be less than the minimum. Otherwise, set the var number to the calculation of the number minus the increment. Now, the only other logic here is in our text input and on the default value of that. So how do we tell it what number to show here inside of the default value of this input? So I have a simple formula where I'm saying if the number output, so the number that is outputted by that control is blank, then we're gonna set that default value to whatever I define the start number should be. Otherwise, set it to the output value. So this just ensures that when you first add this control on your screen and you haven't did anything to it, it's gonna set at that standard start value. Otherwise, it will show the value that you've configured. So the last piece of this is figuring out how to get the value out of this control in the app that you're using it in. So in this case, I'm gonna need that value to be able to write this back to our data source when I'm done. So to get that, it's really as simple as using that output property. So I'll just add in a label here so that we can see what that property is. And I'm gonna set the labels text value to the name of our control, which if we look at it is number control underscore one. So we'll say number control underscore one, and we'll do a dot and we'll look through all the properties and we'll get the number output. So you see now it's properly getting that value of our control. And if I play and I move it, that value is getting changed as I go up and down. Now I can take that, put it in a patch statement or submit, whatever I'm using, and that value will be carried on to my data source. So I hope this gives you some ideas of how you can create your own customizable controls like this. So as I said, I did turn this into a component so that you can easily import it into your applications. I will go out and put that component library as is on my GitHub. Um, just a word of warning, I am working on other components, as you can see, in the same library. So I haven't finished all of the components that are in there. Um, so just be aware of that, but the number control should be good, hopefully without any major bugs. But if you do run into any, let me know. So I'll put a link to where to download that in the video description. Well, that's all that I have for you today. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button, and I'll see you in the next video. And before you leave, check out one of these other videos I have on Power Apps UI and UX.